Okay there, singing world. This video will offer Italian pronunciation help for the aria Come Raggio di Sol from the 24 Italian Aria book. We will explore the tips and tricks to help you sing your aria without accent. It will also discuss proper open and closed vowels and other non-phonetic things such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. Before we do that, please direct your attention to the description of this video below. Um, I have written out the entire text with my system of just writing the things that are not phonetic. I'll leave you to your own IPA if you'd like to write the whole thing out in IPA later. Um, but um, I'm only using the IPA for the things that are not phonetic, the open and closed vowels, the phrasal doubling, and the assimilation. Um, also, in the, the description of the video below, you can find links to my various website, my uh, Facebook fan page, and uh, also to the pronunciation dictionary on the RISE site. This is a very important link. If uh, you follow the link or type in D-O-P-R-A-I into your search engine, you can go to the site. At this site, you can type in any word and it has a playback button. You can hear the word uh, pronounced back to you with a native Italian speaker. What I love about it the most is it acknowledges the existence of non-phonetic Italian such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. So you will see text written out with, um, or, you know, complete lines of text and a native Italian speaker uh, actually doing all of these phrasal doublings and assimilation in action. Now, if you're new to this, by the end of this video, you'll have a, a, a pretty good grasp of it. And in most of my other videos, I, I touch upon this. So uh, if you have four or five of my videos under your belt, you will be an expert in no time. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through first line by line and just read the, read the text. And then we'll go back and do word by word. And I can go over most of the ways I've heard people say the words wrong and how you can actually move your mouth to, to get the words to sound like your native Italian. Okay, so here we go from the beginning, line by line. Come raggio di sol, mite sereno. Come raggio di sol, mite sereno. Sovre placidi flutti si riposa. Mentre del mare nel profondo seno sta la tempesta scosa. Così il riso talor gaio è pacato. Di contento, di gioia un labbro infiora. Mentre nel suo segreto il cor piagato s'angoscia e si martora. Very happy song, right? Um, I'm being facetious, but um, yeah, this is this is probably the most dramatic song in the 24 Italian aria book, and it's also uh, the hardest to sing, and it has actually the most complex Italian of uh, of most of the uh, lyrics in this book. So uh, this is probably one of the most advanced songs in the book. So if you're working on this, congratulations. Um, Okay, so going through it word by word, uh, let's look at the first word. And um, as far as vowels go, vowels are phonetic in Italian, right? All vowels always make the same sound except for two vowels, and, and they're both in this first word. So um, the word O, I mean, the, the vowel O can either be pronounced open or closed. So what I mean by open or closed is um, O that's closed is like the O in oats, right? And open O is like aw, like A-W, like saw, like the, the, the tool, right? So, or I saw, aw, and it's without glide. So what I mean by that is in English, the difference is in English, when we say a vowel, we move our jaw very slightly through the vowel and that causes a glide, right? So if I say the word side or glide, my jaw will move, and I'm exaggerating that now, but that's what happens, right? So if I say oats, slowly my, my jaw will move to an I vowel, right? So you want to avoid this in Italian. So um, if you're going from one vowel to another, a, e, e, o, u. So if you go through all the vowels, you see it's one jaw per vowel. And it doesn't mean you're stiff, it just means you're relaxed, you don't do anything, right? So, um, in, a, in, an, in English, we'd go, I, we would move like that. So that, that's what you want to avoid. So this first word, come, is O, E. 
You can do what I call a purity test. It's just to do the vowels, O, A, right? So now the E is the other vowel in the word, and that's also a non-phonetic vowel. So E comes in two forms, closed and open in Italian. So it's really A, right? So, so a closed vowel is A, and open vowel is A. Right, so those are, the, those are the only vowels that change in Italian. So in this word, both of those vowels are in their closed form. So it's O, A instead of A, A, right? So come, okay. So now the word, this is a very interesting song because we talk about in other, in other videos, monosyllables causing what's called the phrasal doubling. If you notice, I've written the next word with a double R and not only, is it a double consonant, but it breaks the R rule, okay? So I'm going to bombard you with lots of information at the beginning because there are a lot of formulas to get out of the way. So let's talk about R for a minute. I'm going to go off on a tangent. Usually an R is rolled when it touches a consonant, right? So um, and it, when it's surrounded by a vowel, it's flipped. So usually you would say come raggio di sol. The, re the reason why is that come is a strong two-syllable word. And I think there are only six in Italian. Dove, come, sopra. Um, I'm going to forget them. I always forget them. I never have them all. Um, and there's another one in this word. Sovre, right? So sovra, sovre, the, that, that will double. So uh, all of these two-syllable words will cause a phrasal doubling. So thus we have come raggio. The soul, the come makes the R double. Normally that R would flip. So let's go over the rule for R next. So an R that's surrounded by vowels would be flipped. So if you look at the next line, sereno, right? I don't say sereno, no, sereno. It's a flipped R, right? Um, let me see if I can find an R. Oh, profondo, one, two, three, four, five, six lines down, right? You have the word profondo. So that R touches the P. So the, the consonant can be either side of the R, and that makes it roll. And that doesn't matter. Like if the word is, if, if, if the end of a word has an R and the next word has a consonant, the R will roll. Okay, double R will roll. Mentre, there's another word, right? So later on, and that touches a T. So we have the word come. It's a strong two-syllable word. It doubles the word, the, the raggio. Okay, now I have a video on phrasal doubling that I have, and I'll link to you, uh, link, make the link for you in the description. Um, it's all about phrasal doubling. Most of it talks about monosyllables, um, and this is listed in a, in, in a, um, a book by Evelina Colorni. It's the green book called Singer's Italian. And towards the end, there are the list of all of these words. And she also talks about the, the, the two syllable words. But I do go through this in this video. So I will link to that. Okay, so um, next, so the word raggio has a double G, has a double R, and it has a semivowel. Okay, so let's go through all of those things. Uh, so A, a and printed A in Italian is always A. Doesn't matter what, A. There's no difference. It's A. A, A, A. And non changeable, not harmonized. The most non harmonized vowel on the face of the earth, right? So, what happens in English to A? Well, if we have something like care, right? It changes the vowels. Or car, if you're, you know, east of the Delaware Water Gap. Right, uh, the I mean west of the Delaware Water Gap. Right, the 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 R will bleed into the into the vowels. Right, so that does not happen in Italian. So raggio, right? So it's an ah, nice nice pure ah. Now semivowels are elusive because there's one IPA symbol. It's a J for every single semivowel, and they're all different kinds. There are disappearing semivowels, as in this one, right? So it's not raggio, right? It's raggio. So the I is just there to, to give you the position of your mouth. And I'll explain that in a minute. But it disappears. It's just there to make the G, J, and not G, right? So raggio. Now let's talk about the double G. The double G, is it really two Gs? 
right? It's it's a j, but it I the first part of it is a d, isn't it? Rajo. I go up to a d and then I don't say the d and then I say a j, right? Rajo. Okay, you see? So the the space, the stop in phonation, meaning my, my vocal cords stop vibrating, that's what makes the double G. And it has to be done in a very elegant way, right? You don't want to have rajo, where it's shut, you know, shut tight, right? Rajo. Now, what happens to the ah before the jo? Rajo. You see? Ah. There's a nice long ah. Rajo. And then the D. And then the G, semi vowel. Okay, so this is the kind of detail we're going to go through throughout this whole thing. D is of, and it is a weak monosyllable, so there's no phrasal doubling after. So we have to we're gonna we're gonna watch monosyllables through this, and you'll see that some double and some don't. So just the plain old S, right? So sol is the, is short for sole, the sun, right? It's a ray of sun, sole. S-O-L, when it's open, sol is the, the letter, is the, the, the note G from solfege in, in, in Italian, okay? So closed O in this case, sol, okay? Uh, mite, mite, so I is always E, unless it's a semi-vowel, right? So mite, and this E is closed. Now the word for and is the single letter E. E, A, right? And it's closed. The word for is is also a single E, but it's A, open. Okay? So, E sereno. Notice that the S doubles. Why? Because the word and is a strong monosyllable and it causes phrasal doubling. So, mi te sereno. See? I just, this is very, it's all very, very, very little bit. It's not, not exaggerated, right? Mi te sereno. Notice that the R is flipped and that the N is a single N, right? So here are the mistakes you can make both in mite and sereno. I will hear double T's and I will hear double N's. And let me demonstrate the difference, right? So here's a double T. To make a double T, I have to stop phonation. So say that word, that word was spelled with two T's, mite, that would be a double T, mite single t so what's the difference how did i achieve the single t i didn't allow my phonation to stop right to make a double t i have to go up to a t and not say it i'm not actually doing two t's i would go me day and there's a stop there's an actual silence now when you're speaking that silence goes by very fast right so me day me day me day now the other way to make sure you get rid of a double consonant that doesn't belong there. I, I will hear this double all the time when somebody's singing, right? So it's just to do the vowels, right? Feel the vowels. E so it flows, right? Now it feels exactly the same when you put the T back in for singular T, right? So me there it is, right? So now the next one, two mistakes you can make. Sereno, right? Roll the R, double the N. How do I make double N? Well, N is different. N's, M's uh, are different than T's and P's and D's. Uh, those, the, the former, I mean, the latter, they, they stop phonation. The N, you have, you phonate on the N, actually, right? Sereno. That, this is the wrong way. I'm doing the double consonant, right? So if you were to make a double consonant where you didn't want it, to make a double N for uh, sereno, right? Double, wrong. Sereno. So what happens? I do not allow my tip of my tongue to remain in position and phonate on that. Sereno, no. Sereno. Notice that everything is closed in this word. We have not had one open vowel in this aria yet, right? So, sereno. Now, sovre is a very interesting word because it causes a doubling. It's another, it's very rare to have two words in an aria that are double, double uh, syllables that cause phrasal doubling. They're, they're very rare, but we have two in this aria. So, notice I would say sovre placidi, okay? Sovre I go up to the P, I don't say it. 
very subtly, and then that's a double P. So it's like double T, right? Sovre placidi. See? And the, and the expression comes from the space, not from the force of the consonant. I don't do sovre plat. No, nothing violent. Sovre placidi. See? It goes by so fast you almost didn't see it, but it's there. Yes? Okay, so just like a little bit of, uh, a, a little bit of spice, right? Sovre placidi. Placidi. So C-I is chi, and you need an H to, to make it hard, to make it key, right? So, and it's never C in Italian. That happens in Spanish. So placidi, right? So here's the other thing. This ch can get doubled very easily, right? So Americans will, or non-Italian speakers will go placidi, plat. GDC, that's a double, it's wrong, right? Pla G D. So what do I double? I double the ah. I don't allow the stop in the phonation, so it's the same. So now here we have a double T in the next word. Flu T. Okay, so let's talk about T for English T versus Italian T. Right? If I, I say, would you like some T? T, it has uh, air through it, right? So if I said flu T as I do in English, it would have air, and it's still a dental. It's exactly the same position. It's just has air through it, right? The Italian one is just like, um, it is closer to D, but it sound, sounds like T, right? So if I said D or da, ta, not da in ta, you see, there's not that aspiration through it, right? So, a, uh, uh, da, ta. So if you think about t D and then you just make it T from there, it, and it's as, almost as voiced as possible. It's still unvoiced. So what do I mean by voiced versus unvoiced? Uh, a D is a voiced consonant. It's the, the cousin to T. They're both dentals, right? So da, my vocal cords are vibrating. Ta, my vocal cords do not vibrate through the consonant. And that's the difference. So Again, da, ta, flu, ti. So how do I make the double T? Do I do two T's? No. I go up to the, I, I make the vowel long. I stop the vowel. I go up to the T. Don't say it. And then I say the T. So make the vowel long, flu, stop, right? Go up to the T, flu, and then you say the T. Flu, T. So that's my exercise, right? That's very good for singing, right? So when you sing, your vowel won't shorten. I hear, this is the mistake I hear a lot. People go, flute So you have no vowel, you, your voice cuts out, right? flute See, that gives you the, the, the control to do the double T wherever you want it to be. Okay, going on. Si riposa. Si, weak, weak monosyllable, the reflexive. Uh, to do something to yourself, right? Uh, si riposa, si riposa. So notice the R is flipped, the O is closed, the S is unvoiced, I mean, it's voiced, and then there's an A. Ah. Mistake we can make, riposa, a. Uh. We do that at the end. We, we neutralize the thing that is not stressed, right? So the accent is on riposa, but the A ah stays A, ah, you see? So that's the mistake. When you're not thinking, you can very easily go riposa, ah, make sure it's ah. Okay. So now, uh, mentre. This is a closed D. Mentre. Okay. So now let's talk about stressed vowels versus unstressed vowels. So in Italian, the good news is anything that is not on the accent of the word is going to be, if it's an E or an O, it's closed, right? So everything that is on the unstress or the non-accented syllable is either A or O. So that's great. It gets rid of a lot of your, your work. You know that everything that is not accented is a closed vowel. Now the accented vowels can either be open or closed and you have to memorize them. There are a few formulas, but that's about it, right? The rest you have to memorize. There's no rhyme or reason. Right? So, and in this case, 
we look at the stress, and that's the only thing we have to worry about, about whether it's open or closed, E, right? So in this case, we memorize that mentre is closed. We know that main has to be studied because it's stressed, but the unstressed is tre, and we know that's closed. Okay, let's go on. Del, D-E-L, right? Closed E. Mare. So if you notice, the accent is on the A, ah, and then the E is closed. We know it because it's unstressed. Nail, N-E-L. Profondo. So again, up to this point, there has been no open vowel, right? So we know in this word, you have three O's. The stressed one is closed, and we know that the unstressed are already closed by, by always, right? That's the rule. Profondo. Okay, seno, close D. Seno. So now here we have a strong monosyllable starting the next word, sta. So the L will double, and L doubles the same way. See, that, that's what I left out before. So L's, N's, and M's double by phonating, allowing the the L to stay in phonation, right? So double L is like Dela. Dela, Dela. So I go L and I keep my L while my vocal cords are vibrating, right? So in this case, I wouldn't say sta la tempesta. I would say sta la tempesta. You see, I stop on the L. And to an Italian, that's that's kind of staccato to an Italian, right? Sta la tempesta. And a lot, often in Verdi, you'll see a staccato over the sta because the, 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 it's doubling the next word. Sta la tempesta. So, so in Italian, a staccato is anything that stops your forward motion. Not necessarily is it staccato sometimes, right? So uh, next word, tempesta. So if you notice, here's a great, here we have an open vowel finally, and we write open E with the, the, the E with the rounded edges. That's the IPA syllable, right? So notice you have two different E's in this word. You have A, A, A for your vowels. So the unstressed, tempesta. Notice how there's a certain inertia to a word in Italian this way because the by closing the unstressed, it propels you forward, right? Tempesta. And that's what gives you that feeling of legato and forward motion in Italian. Next word, ascosa. So now, if you're looking this word up, you might not find it. It's just old-fashioned, uh, ascosto, hidden, right? Ascosa. Both are correct. There's a movement now to, to modernize a lot of Italian librettos. And, you know, I, it doesn't really make a difference to me, right? The, the old one is beautiful and it's poetic and actually gives you a, a hint of antiquity. I like that very much. So, ascosa. So now, let's talk about S. Because when we speak in spoken Italian, we can say ascosa. See, ascosa, right? Now, you're going to have three notes on, on this, right? Three syllables, three notes, right? When you sing, you can't put the S where you speak. So once again, I speak ascosa. See, the S is on the first syllable. When I sing ascosa, ascosa, when you sing. If, if you do that, you'll notice a difference that before, if you were singing asco, see, be between those two words, you have a stop in legato. As, even worse, asco. Ascosa, which comes to the other principle. In singing Italian, all upbeats have a vowel, have long vowel in our legato, right? And even if you're singing Mozart, Mozart uses this principle all the time. There are long upbeats. So it will sound more like Mozart if you have a long upbeat or, or, or Verdi, or any, any Italian opera, right? Ascosa. Okay, going on. Così. So words that end on a stress, most, most words in, in Italian do not end on a stress. The stress is on the penultimate syllable, meaning the second to last, right? In this word, the stress is on the ultimate syllable, and that's why you have that accent. The accent on, on the I vowel has nothing to do with pronunciation. So così, that's going to double the R. See? So così riso. And that's, that's why. Okay? So the word così, they always... Closed. Riso. 
the R doubles. Talor, o, o, o. So here's, here's another example of, in English, we, we have an R. R's greatly affect vowels in English. And in fact, in English, the vowels harmonize to the consonants. In Italian, the consonants harmonize to the vowels. Right? So the vowels rule right? in Italian. So that's an O vowel. So if you went A, O, and you compared ta lor you see and it's one thing at a time the r rolls but does not affect the vowel what do we do in english what do we do as english speakers seeing this word we will open it right talor no talor okay gaio gaio so here's another semi vowel there's an e in this word and and so we go from a e o except for the E goes by so fast, that's what makes it a semi-vowel. Gaio, right? So a lot, a lot of times you'll hear that that's a Y, and you have to be careful. Because again, remember what I said in the first line of the, the aria, the semi-vowel gives you the position, right? So if you were Italian and you said the word yellow, you would say yellow, yellow. See where I'm starting from the E. If you're English or American and you say yellow especially if you're uh, i did a double l yellow 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 it's down there you see the color right yellow so the the semi vowel is from that e position so you have to think ga e o ga yo and now i'm not going to pronounce the e in the word right i'm going to go to the position of e though ga yo does that make sense so if you think about the position, um, same thing with the raggio, right? I'm not going to say raggio, but that journey is taken by my mouth without saying the E. Raggio, all the way up to E position. What's the difference? How can I do that wrong? Like this, raggio, see, down there, raggio, up there, okay? Uh, so that, that's also a little detail that will help you sound more Italian. Um, here we have our word A again for and, and that doubles the P, a pacato. Now there's a danger in this because after that, you have single consonants, right? So it takes the coordination to do double P, single K, single T, a pacato. So to practice, if you're having problems with this and you hear yourself going pacato and doubling, think about the vowels. Ah, pacato, right? You just double those vowels. Let's go on. Di weak monosyllable. E di contento. Contento. Okay, open. E. Contento. We know that the unstressed are closed though. Uh, di, again, of. Never doubles. Joya. Jaw. So we go all the way to a. Joya. So notice the first semi-vowel. You have the both semi-vowels in this. The first one is the position to get the soft j instead of g, right? So jaw, right? Second one, you have to go to the position. Joya, right? If I did it in slow motion, I'm actually saying the E, but it's so fast that you don't hear it, right? You just hear a Y, right? English position, joya, no, right? G, joya, there you are. Un labro. So now double B, we have labro. Uh, we tend to stop phonation when we do double B, and that's wrong, right? It's not labro. See what I did? La, there's a stop. La, bro. And even worse, people will cut that first vowel. La, bro. La, bro. So how do I do double B? I phonate in position of B. That's it. La, bro. See, if I did it in slow motion, la, bro. I'm getting itchy from doing all of these, right? And my face, my mask is itching me. I'm, I, I feel like I'm crawling now with... Uh, with vibration, labro, 
Labro, there we have it, right? So the R rolls and the O is closed. So now we have an assimilation. You heard me talking about assimilation, but look at the, the uh, next word, infiora, infiora. So the N assimilates into the fricative F. So now this happens with fricatives. Your fricatives are unvoiced, F, F and V. So an N before an F will do this. Infiora. So what happened there? Um, I'm going to say fiora or uh, inverno, right? So uh, to do a V, the word for winter in Italian, inverno. So what happens is my bottom lip makes, touching the top teeth makes a V or an F, right? Fiora, verno, right? Fiora, verno. So what happens is the N will assimilate and not go in your mouth. How do we usually make an N? In, N, right? We won't use the tip of the tongue to make the N. We'll use the bottom lip to make it. Okay, I know, this is, bear with me, this sounds freaky, right? So Italian speaking, we'll assimilate this N, not even thinking about it. In fiora, did you see what happened? In, I'm gonna do it in slow motion. In fiora, not, in a fiora. Why? It's inefficient. It stops the legato, right? In a fiora. Uh, in a verno. No. In fiora, inverno. And it goes by so fast that you just hear legato. Very efficient, right? So what if I were to sing and try to put that N in my mouth? This is what would happen. In a fiora. Why is that not so good? Well, to maintain legato, I have to release. I, I have to release my tongue and keep a vowel going, and then I end up with a shadow vowel. Does that make sense? So in a, there's your shadow vowel. As I release the tongue, and then I have to bring my bottom lip up to make the F, right? In a fiora, right? Now there are some people who can do this. Go no, in fiora, right? But most of the time, it doesn't happen that way. And especially for Italians. Italians, it wouldn't happen that way, right? So, in fiora is the, the most logical and, and legato way, right? So now, um, you can still do it right and do it wrong if you stay on the phonation too long, right? So if you go in too long, then you're going to get called out for it. You don't want to phonate on it like a double consonant. In fiora, it just goes by. Okay, enough about that, right? So uh, we've had mentre, we've had, uh, we haven't had nel, but it's closed e. Suo, so the possessive pronouns are written as one syllable, usually. Sometimes you have one note and you have to sing two notes, right? It's not really a semivowel. Suo, right? Tua, mia, segreto. So, Close D, rolled R, single T. Il, I L, I is always E. Cor, open O. Piagato, all single consonants, right? With a semi vowel at the beginning. Uh, sangosha. So you have two things in this word. You have an assimilation again, the N assimilated, right? So N is done in several positions. I should do a video about N, right? So it's all about what follows it. So now think about it. You're going to say gosha. What part of your tongue are you using? If you answered the middle, you are correct. Your tongue arches up gosha, right? To do that. Just the same as if you would say um, uh, karma, karma or uh, car, right? Carne. It's the middle of the tongue that makes that. So the K and the G are related. The G is the voiced and the K is the unvoiced, right? So when you go sangosha, the N is, is done with the middle of the tongue before there. So it's another assimilation, right? Sangosha. Notice that the O opens. And now let's talk about sh in Italian. When you see S-C-I, in Italian, that's a double consonant. I know there's, there are just three different letters there, but it's technically a double consonant. Why? 
because phonation stops before it. So, non-Italian speaker would go sangosha, and Italian goes sangosha. What's the difference? Sangosha. The sha is completely on the third syllable, and then there's a stop. It's a millisecond, right? Sangosha. Did you hear that? Different than sangosha. Sangosha. Right? We're lasciare. Does that make sense? So there's a stop completely on the third syllable. Okay, next, uh, a C. Now I double the S because of the strong monosyllable and. And then finally, martora. This is a very good word for you because it has two R's. One's rolled, one's not. So if you're having problems rolling R's uh, in the wrong spots most of the time, right? It's not martora. They're not both rolled. The first one rolls, the second one flips. Why? Surrounded by vowels. First one touches a T. Marbles. Surrounded by vowels. Martora. Okay, so now we've done the whole thing. So to wrap up, Let's read the whole text, go through it again with all of this stuff in place. Come raggio di sol, mite sereno. Come raggio di sol, mite sereno. Sovre placidi flutti si riposa, mentre del mare nel profondo seno sta la tempesta scosa. Così riso talor gaio e pacato, di contento, di gioia un labbro in fiora, mentre nel suo segreto il cor piagato s'angoscia e si martora. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like. Um, and as always, we'll see you at the opera. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.